I'm very excited to chat with you. I'm a huge fan of Yellow Jackets, like the biggest fan. So <laughs> You know what's fun is I was a huge fan too before I was on the show. I didn't yeah. do season one. So I had the um, just this wonderful experience of joining the show in season two that I show that I already loved. So that it was pretty, is so cool. That pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is a little bit actually. Yeah. Yeah. I see that um, you've written some other articles on, um, Yellow Jack as well. Is that correct? Oh yeah. I'm talking to like, I, last year I talked to everybody, I think. Uh, and this year I just talked to Karin on, um, was that yesterday? <laughs> These days are all running together. I talked to oh. Karin yesterday. Um, I talked to Ben, uh, Semenov, um, oh, I've talked to like, who else? Warren, Cole, um, wow. yeah, I'm, I'm hitting it like slowly. They're all coming in, um, costumes. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been fun. I, I mean, it's like, I get to pick like all these questions as I'm, they're coming up as I'm watching. So it's great to be like, oh, I get to, you know, actually ask somebody about this. <laughs> yeah. And have you seen tonight's episode? Yeah, having talked yeah. to Karen. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like before I talked to her. I mean, I know she's the EP, but I'm like, I she's directing this final episode. I need to see it. So I'm kind of, you know, quietly devastated. But for the last, yeah, yeah. I, I was too when I read the script. I, I see Corey. Hi, Corey. How are you? Um, um. Uh, so we're allowed to talk Hi. about the last episode as well if it comes up. Yeah, I think so yes. because well, this okay, will be, I mean, whenever this is published, will be after the fact. So yeah. yeah so. <laughs> and if you hear snoring, I just have a giant dog sitting under my feet. Oh, here. my dog's over there. So sometimes okay. you might hear him like making noises. So <laughs> that's funny. <Yeah. laughs> Great. Well, I'm so excited. Like I said, um, the first thing I wanted to ask you about, there's like so many set pieces to talk about, but uh, the first one that I noticed was probably like the meat locker where Shauna talks yeah. to Jackie. And mm -hmm. I was thinking this is, it feels like almost like a sacred place. And I wanted to hear a little bit about what went into creating this particular part of the set. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned, I love the meat locker. And there was, you know, we thought a long time about how to make the door for the meat locker and tried a lot of different options. And I'm so glad that we ended up with just a piece of the fuselage of the plane because I found that just felt really like an eerie kind of conjunction. And we were trying for many many eerie conjunctions in the season. I was thinking about um, the season as a whole, I feel is kind of like an unreliable narrator season. The whole season is about how trauma is distorting people's perceptions of reality. So we tended to look at each set as where is this person, where's the character inside? How is the set reflecting their inner world and how they're processing trauma? And I think trauma obviously is a big word for the season and trauma, I looked it up. It originally comes from Greek for wound, but I also remember in German that trauma relates to dreamlike. So in a lot of ways, I was thinking this season is kind of like this processing your trauma in this dreamlike way. And people are trying to heal their wounds. But of course, when people try to heal, they sometimes harm themselves or others as well. So that was in the back of my mind with a lot of the really interesting set pieces we did this season, because a lot of them do sort of exist on that borderline between reality and possibly someone's inner fantasy or possibly someone's unreliable narrative. So in the, in the meat locker, actually the meat shack, we called it, we, we wanted it to feel a little bit ethereal and sort of beautiful as well as haunting and frightening. Yeah, so we looked yeah. at um, Francis Bacon and other artists to do with like viscera and skeletons and layers of flesh, because of course the meat locker has these jarring kind of, well, eventually, you know, we know Jackie's in there, but it also right. has these jarring pieces of meat that have this kind of frightening silhouette. But at the same time, the meat locker itself is, looks like it was made by, you know, it was made by them to keep the meat cooler and there's lots of kind of branches interwoven and a bit of moss put in. The moss was a big thing this season as well because it's a little, a little dreamlike, but at the same time, obviously frightening because it's from necessity. And they're, you know, in the house, they in the cabin, they put moss in the cracks so that they don't freeze. So the meat locker was intended to be this kind of terrifying, but also beautiful place. So that when Sean is there talking to Jackie and she's effectively processing her trauma, there's actually different lighting cues. Like when she's talking to Jackie, oh. it gets to be a bit more ethereal and the light comes in through the cracks and, you know, highlights the moss and is meant to almost be sort of a 
a pretty aesthetic, but at the same time, we also have darker aesthetics in there where you kind of see her framed by pieces of meat and print, you know, framed by more frightening shadowy moments. So it felt like a really, it's kind of the heart of the season because that's where Shauna is processing the loss of Jackie and, you know, it perceives her as in a dreamlike way being real and talks to her in there as well. Yeah, that's really interesting. Wow. Um, and so it is kind of sacred. Like I was like, because I, I got the sacred Ooh. vibe of it. And that's that's really interesting. Um, another notable set that I'm not sure, I guess my question is like, how much did you, I'm sure you have a hand in everything, but like the cliff where <laughs> Crystal falls or even leading up to that. Because um, that seems to be a really important place this season with like Thaisa almost jumping off. Um, Crystal falling to her death, obviously Coach Ben's like leaning over it. So um, I feel like that's a very important spot too. And I wanted to hear a little bit about like uh, putting this together, even like, I'm sure you worked with maybe special effects for Crystal's fall or something too. <laughs> yeah, the, the cliff was, I think, our biggest challenge of the season from a practical point of view. It was initially, obviously the writers called it the shit cliff, which pretty much <laughs> is the cliff that you yeah. <laughs> throw your buckets over. And Again, it kind of had that little moment of treading a bit on humor before it became absolutely sad and horrible, which is that nice balance. So we wanted the cliff to feel really tall and kind of frightening. We initially looked at a lot of locations for that because we were in Vancouver and we were we were constantly at odds with the weather here because we shot the season in the summer and fall, mostly a little bit over the winter. But of course, we had a lot of snow to deal with. So we built a lot of really extensive for a TV series snow sets on stage. So on stage, we built our cabin and a forest. Cabin and a forest, you know, those are the, those are challenging to build on stage, but we brought in some real trees to give some realism and relatively straightforward. The snow is done by our special effects department. I think that was a giant challenge. We, at the beginning, had, you know, quite curated, careful techniques and four different processes and lots of different types of snow. And towards the middle of the season, there was just so much volume that the special effects department literally ran out of snow. They had to order snow from another province. We were just oh doing gosh. such a large volume of that. Um, the cliff, I think, though, was a great, great piece of sculpting. So we built, we ended up building the cliff on stage because it would have been too dangerous weather-wise to shoot it at the location, especially given that we would have been creating snow as well, which can be, you know, treacherous and slippery. So we ended up building two sets, the top of the cliff on stage and also the cliff face, just a massive amount of sculpting and foam by our sculpting department. And I think our, we had amazing sculptors on the show. They had the most realistic looking rock you can imagine. And we interspersed real trees with carved trees. I think they did an amazing job on that. And then our special effects department, of course, was heavily tasked to create the snow. Um, I think that was just a, that was a massive job for them on the show, as well as creating the cracking ice for Javi falling through. Yeah. And just, our special effects department was really running the whole show. And we even had one weekend where they were creating, you know, fake snow on stage while literally getting rid of real snow that wasn't supposed to be a, there at a location for two separate units. So it was a real, really <laughs> big show for them, for sure. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So the cliff. Like, yeah. Everybody's working ahead. together really well. I was going to say, it sounds like, yeah. But go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead, what you were going to say about the cliff. I was going to say the cliff was a big undertaking and we uh, built it on set and it was two sets. There was the top and the bottom of the cliff. And I really loved um, in the episode that Ben shot, I don't know if you talked to him about the, did Misty Chris, did Misty push Crystal or did she? I did ask you know? her about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, we just don't know if we'll ever know, <laughs> even though even Misty knows. But I love the way he shot that and did the beautiful crane shot and really extended it. So it was a combination of a physical set and then the uh, VFX did the extension, but we did build a big set piece for that. Wow, that's amazing. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. Um, so another thing I had questions about was, you know, Coach Ben's dream sequences this oh, season, yeah. especially the one, there's one in a cabin that looks like the cabin they're in. It's really bizarre. And I was wondering, like, what kind of decisions you had to make in considerations to like, this has to be, this has to be purposeful. I can't be crazy that it looks like the cabin. So I wanted to hear about that. <laughs> yeah, I think that was again, very, very much in the theme of the season, which is that, Co that, that, that Coach Ben is going back to his history with Paul and 
at one point he has this alternate history where he's originally we we were quite careful to create a very sort of 90s sort of boho soho apartment for Paul and we wanted him to have been an incredibly viable and positive alternate life option for the coach so of course to make it as traumatic as possible that you know he's this is his opportunity that he is lacking and missing yeah. so we were careful with the 90s details and we always like to put easter eggs in one of our uh, writers had a particular poster that he wanted from a 90s band that we put in there so our set tech department you know including with van's store and van's apartment we had a really fun time doing I all bet. of the 90s yeah. sets so we started the first it, it appeared over four episodes the first episode was literally a 90s loft with some brick and some you know uh, some colors to kind of make it feel happy like this is a happy memory yeah. for him and then over four episodes we added the rafters from the cabin and added the antler you know, always the yes, antlers yes. above the fireplace and then we added the actual stone fireplace and then in the final and then um, some trees and snow outside in the third iteration and then in the fourth iteration, we literally took our set pieces and put them in our cabin set, as it were. So we oh could God. feel that by the fourth, instead of the cabin encroaching on Ben's apartment, Ben's uh, or Paul's apartment, as it were, Paul's furniture is in the cabin, including the phone, which I really enjoyed when, you know, there's a kind yes. of modern phone in there and the modern TV. So that that was really, really fun to do those four beats. Yeah, that's amazing. That's and it and it makes so much sense too with his journey, which I do have a question about. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> what happens? What he does? Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask about was the the layer inside that that Ben, Coach Ben, and jo and um, Javi go to the um, that like weird cave thing. It looks so creepy inside there. And does it? It looks. I think like it looks like there's tentacles. Maybe my TV is. Like, <laughs> no, that's is that what it's supposed to look like? So what it is is again full kudos to our sculpting department because caves. I would say we did probably the most challenging things you can do with sets this season. We built trees, we built um, snow sets, we built cliffs on stage, and we built caves. Caves are so tricky, and if they're not done well, of course they won't look real. So we had an incredibly dedicated sculpting department, and we worked and worked to make this the rock look as real as possible. And what those tentacle-like things were, and that definitely was intentional. I wanted to feel like um, it's being encroached on. Those are the roots of the trees from above coming down because it's warm in there. So I think metaphorically, it's the seeking warmth, seeking safety, and it just has this extremely creepy feel to it. And of course, because the cave is meant to be very shallowly underground, you know, he finds that hollow tree and pulls a bush away and goes down, that we could justify little light leaks coming from above. And that's, of course, where the warmth comes up. So the clue of the caves was always the trees with more moss and the melted snow around them that um, Natalie finds earlier. And then the warmth is coming up from kind of a hot spring within the cave. So we worked really hard to make the cave really eerie you still need to be able to see it enough so the light leaks are helpful in that and then bring those roots of the trees down because theoretically they're going down for the warmth and the water as well. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, I wanted to ask you, there's another question about um, Shauna's dream sequence in episode six where she, we, she thinks, we think she has the baby. The way the cabin is set up almost appears like it's a new part of the cabin, which is kind of like my first... Uh, like sense that something is not right. And I was wondering, is that another mind trick or is that something specific that you, did you change the set a little bit to make it feel? It is a bit of a mind trick. I would say a lot of that falls on Liz, our director and Shasta, our DP, because they did much like in the meat shack, they changed the lighting so that- Wow. You, well, like, I think the show plays with the audience in that way that you want the baby to be alive. You want yeah. a happy ending, but you kind of need to know it's off. So yeah. when things get light and bright and happy, we know that's probably, that's off. So I think they um, did a lot of lighting cues to keep it a little more ethereal, softer, a little bit brighter. And then they we kept the furniture a bit spare, less dirty, so that you emotionally feel that things are better, things are looking up. And of course, then you go to the deepest dark pit when she wakes up and goes to her darkest fantasy, which is that they eat the baby then in that case, everything is dark and dirty. 
And then when she wakes up into reality, which is kind of the middle zone, that's a third different setup and lighting cue. So yeah, everyone was careful to make sure that we were playing a little bit with people's minds and perception. Are we in the light, happy place? Are we in the darkest pit of despair? Or we're somewhere, we land somewhere that is awful, but not quite as dark as the meeting the baby. Yeah, it felt, because it felt completely different. It felt like a diff, like I was looking at a different cabin and that's why, mm -hmm. that's that's really interesting. Yeah, it was um, a lot of um, lighting as well as just slight shifts in the decorating. Yeah, wow. So finally, the finale. We can, I'm bringing up some things about that. I, oh my gosh, Natalie's death sequence on the plane um, was just, I can't stop thinking. That's the scene that I can't stop thinking about. I mean, there's a lot of things, but like, I don't know. I was very moved by it. And I was thinking about the way the, the plane, I mean, we haven't seen any kind of plane like this before, like the way it's set up. No. So no. yeah, what went into creating this space of between life and death, I guess? Yeah, and I think that, again, is a bit of the same sort of tonal shift. So there were some discussions about, of course, we had the sequence in episode five where Natalie, where there's the burnt plane, which is, and then we see the antler queen, and it's extremely jagged and frightening, and there's flames, and there's like, you know, charred bodies, and it's meant to be incredibly disturbing yeah. and claustrophobic. And then this plane, there was some discussion about it being a different plane that she is literally going to a different plane of existence and she's on a different plane. So we instead did a larger, more spacious, brighter, very simple, minimal plane to set you up for some hope. And I'll admit, I haven't seen it yet. I, I see the episodes when they oh. air, so I haven't seen how they shot it or what exactly or who we see in the plane. Oh, but I will, Lots of clues, I will, I will as let always. that to you. You can be surprised, but it's beautiful. Yeah. It's the way it's it's done is really beautiful. Oh, great. So yeah, I, we I was really moved by it. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. yeah. The, the, ultimately, I mean, the our writers are amazing and they really think carefully through the connections between the story and the visuals, which always makes the show a joy to work on. So there was a lot of discussion and careful thought about this should be a different plane. Yeah. She's going somewhere really yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so final question is going back to Coach Ben, what uh, he does this at the end of the season, or it hints at what he does is, you know, burning down the cabin, um, which is just like shocking. And also I was thinking probably, uh, I mean, did you actually burn down the cabin for you as a set, you know, as the pr production oh. designer, like, was like, no, you know, so I, I guess I wanted to know how did they pull that off? Like what? Uh, yeah, like just to Yeah. I want to hear everything. that was again uh lots of special effects first of all when we left the episode and left the script there was a certain amount of uncertainty as to whether did coach burn down the cabin right. for sure is it absolutely spelled it's out that way in the episode out, but, they just yeah, but it, it seemed like a reasonable like, assumption yeah, but yeah. it not 100 percent spelled out um yeah that was really fun we we did that both on our stage set of the cabin and then we also built another cabin. So we we really had three cabins. There's the cabin that was season one, that was a location. And then we built a um, stage set of it. Then we built another cabin in a parking lot to physically burn it down. And we physically burnt it to the ground because, you know, we have great VFX, but there's nothing that beats an actual physical effect. Right. So we literally built the facade of the cabin again. We put some, you know, snow out front. We We set it all up in a parking lot with a blue screen behind it and our special effects just lit it it was one take there were a few pieces that they did a couple takes on you know pieces that were intentionally rigged to fall and collapse like the roof of the porch and so on and most of the crew came out that night to watch it and it was about 30 minutes and we just stood there and watched it burn because it was really transfixing and i have to say i haven't seen the episode but i felt it burned really well i was glad that it actually took some time it felt very realistic the way that the flames crept up the porch columns and everything collapsed so it, it looks realistic so none of the actors were there like watching it or anything just the crew um i can't remember who was there from the cast there were stunt people there to to duplicate the stunts of people running out of the cabin okay and to see over their backs um i can't remember if, if any of the actual cast were there but we definitely had you know some producers up and a lot of the crew found reasons to be out there <laughs> to watch so, it because you don't don't do that every day right. and the lots reaction. and lots of safety and fire suppression and sure. fire departments there too 
the reactions from the cast are just amazing in the final shots like of their faces it's just another memorable moment so yeah it's interesting because yeah. I felt it was you know I myself don't know exactly where the story's going but it's certainly you know you think about the writer's room using metaphorical we're going to burn this burn the story to the ground at the end of the at the end of the uh, season to set ourselves up for something new so they really it'll change the dynamic completely not having that cabin as the sort of safe space yeah yeah wow well this has been so much fun chatting with you about all of this so and, much um, fun to meet you too thank yeah. you thank you so much for your time you too uh hopefully we meet again and yeah, you know, we meet again thanks too. very much bye okay, take care bye